Master, why do you speak in parables whenever a crowd is near? The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you. But to others it comes by means of parables, so they may look but not see, and listen but not understand. What do the parables of the Bible hide? The parable of the unmerciful servant. Jesus, glory be to him, gave an important example on the issues of awaiting the Savior Christ in his blessing Bible, which is the parable of the unmerciful servant. He said, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered him that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I'll pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when this servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to shock him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father would treat each of you unless you forgive your brother and sister from your heart. Our master gives us through this parable a big lesson about love and compassion towards the ones we love. He depicts for us through his words a mirror to the world of the kingdom which we are waiting to be part of at any time. He teaches us how to deal with those who offend us. He teaches us how to overcome mistakes and offenses and adopt instead love, peace, forgiveness, and pardon. We all commit sins and await forgiveness of our loved ones. Imagine how life would be if whoever sins finds someone to forgive him. When we sin, we implore the Lord to forgive us. So dear loved ones, we should forgive and pardon. But we forgive the person who forgives and not the person who makes it hard on us when we seek his forgiveness. The society ascends to a perfect world when we all do this. Despite that, a person should not insist on sinning. Rather, we should try to make as little sins as possible so that the Lord accepts us. And whoever forgives us does not consider that as a shortcoming in us. Yet, the sinner should not rely on others' forgiveness or the society will go corrupt. We also deduce from this parable a huge significance on which the believer's journey is based in terms of the call to the right, which is the relationship between the believer and his fellow brother. It is the duty of every believer to forgive his fellow brother's mistakes and not to hold him accountable for every big or small one. Or else, this will lead a discord among the followers of the call to the right. Christ urged his disciples in several instances from his biblical recommendations to focus on forgiveness among the fellow believers when he said, commenting on Peter's words, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, not seven times, but 77 times. In another instance in the Bible, he said, So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them, and if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. If man does not forgive his fellow human for his sins, the Lord shall hold him accountable as much as he himself held the people. And thus, 
shall fail the first trial and test and derail from the path of the cold to the right. Therefore, it's a beautiful portrait that our master portrays for us to build a rightful society. And this portrait includes lessons on how to consecrate the relationship between fellow brothers on faith, especially these awaiting salvation by Christ, who was and still is an exemplar in moral for love, forgiveness, peace, and pardon.